Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Apologies for delaying getting started. We have some technical difficulties, but we're delighted to be here today. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone for being here to celebrate the start of Towards Work. Um, my name is Claire Hayes. I am the coordinator of Towards Work. For accessibility, I will be giving a visual descriptor of myself, um, as will all our speakers today. I'm a white female with blonde hair and I'm wearing a blue and green dress with flowers on it. I have a Towards Work background behind me with the Towards Work logo here. And on the other side, I've got, we've got the Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn icons. And you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram at Towards underscore work and or visit our website at towardswork.ie. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this morning. I particularly want to thank our speakers who are showing their support for this new initiative by sharing their time, um, insights and experience. I'd particularly like to thank Minister Anne Rabbit for joining us today to celebrate the launch of Towards Work and for her sort of work in this area. Before I invite our first speaker, I'd like to give some context to this new initiative. Towards, Towards Work is a person-focused initiative that exists to support any individual who has a disability on their journey toward employment, self-employment or further education. We will be facilitating free online sessions, the first of which starts next Tuesday, which will be on Building Confidence at 11 a.m. Please do visit our website towardswork.ie to register for this training and our other events. As well as practical training, we've developed a mentorship program in partnership with the Open Doors Initiative. We have mentors signed up from across a number of sectors who are willing to help and support individuals on their journey. The launch of Towards Work coincides with the beginning of a new entrepreneurship and self-employment course in TUD Dublin, headed up by Professor Tom Cooney. This course has been designed specifically for people with disabilities and Towards Work are delighted to be funding this course and support the 25 participants who are beginning their journey towards self-employment. Towards Work is a project supported by Pubble and the Dormant Account Funds. We are part of the Open Doors Initiative Group um, a group of uh, over 100 companies and NGOs who work with government departments to create pathways to education and employment for marginalised people nationwide. Significant employment policy changes have taken place over the last 10 years in Ireland. According to the latest study by the NDA launched yesterday, people with disabilities still face a major gap when it comes to employment and education opportunities. This report, with the, which the Open Doors Initiative contributed to, has highlighted the need for further supports for people with disabilities. In Ireland, there are approximately 650,000 people living with a disability. Research shows that people with disabilities have far fewer employment opportunities when compared to their non-disabled peers. According to the 2016 census, only 36.5% of people with a disability aged 20 to 64 are in employment. This is compared to 73% of people without a disability. People with disabilities have also been excluded from further education and self-employment opportunities. This exclusion can often result in socialized, social isolation, inflation and confidence. This is what Towards Work is here to do, to support these individuals and bridge that gap and empower them on their journey. I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome the Minister of State for Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Use, with responsibility for disability, Anne Rabbit, who's come here to officially launch Towards Work today. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. I am a white female with brown hair, sitting at my desk here in Leinster House, and I'm wearing a baby blue shawl. So at the outset, I want to thank Claire Hayes and the Open Door Initiative for inviting me here today for the launch of this very important programme towards work. Since my appointment as Minister for Disability, my key objective has been to improve the lives of people with disabilities in a real and practical sense. Engaging in employment has a positive impact on many aspects of a person's well-being. Uh, furthermore, better employment outcomes are likely to lead to a better health and social inclusion outcomes. According to the latest EU SILC data, the consistent poverty rate was highest amongst individuals not at work due to illness or disability at 
1.1%, and lowest amongst those who are at work at 1.3%. So it's clear that improving employment rates for people with disabilities is essential and it is particularly important for young people with disabilities who are likely to start out with lower employment rates. While people with disabilities in their late 20s and early 30s do take up work in a significant numbers according to the census, employment rates are still considerably lower than their non-disabled peers. The gap widens with age from then on as people with disabilities are more likely to drop out of employment faster than their counterparts. The state has a range of support and processes in place across a number of departments to engage with and support people with disabilities to identify and then achieve their employment ambitions. As you know, on Taoiseach Michael Martin recently launched Pathways to Work 2021 to 2020, an ambitious new strategy designed to drive employment as Ireland recovers from COVID-19. The National Employment Strategy aims to help 75,000 long-term unemployed to work. It includes a key commitment to extend targeted employment supports to groups facing challenges entering the workforce, such as people with disabilities, loan burdens and minority groups. While much progress is being made in delivering real jobs to people with disabilities, as evidenced in census data, significant numbers of people with disabilities remain outside the workforce. Therefore, we need to strengthen our efforts to ensure that people with disabilities realise their full potential. I was very pleased to see that my colleague, uh, Minister Heather Humphreys, the Minister for Social Protection, is providing money through the Dormant Accounts funding for the project being launched here today. The Towards Work programme aligns perfectly with this good aims in the area and the Pathways to Work strategy. Towards Work is a person-focused initiative developed to support participants in their journey towards employment, self-employment, or further education. The programme promotes employment prospects and meaningful social roles for people with disabilities who are distant from the labour market using a range of person-centred supports. Participants will, provide, will be provided with free practical training, resources and bespoke mentorship opportunities to educate and empower them to take the next steps towards their goals. On a practical level, the Towards Work programme provides one-to-one -one support and guidance. It emphasises personal development, which is critical to building self-esteem and self-confidence. Towards Work will engage with Open Doors members, companies and employers for change network to connect job seekers with employers, as well as supporting participants through the job application and interview process Participants will also have the opportunity to join a mentorship program and be carefully matched with a mentor who can support them on their professional journey. Towards Work will also aim to increase opportunities for entrepreneurship and self-employment as a possible career option for people with disabilities. As we know, starting your own business, as well as being at an exciting time, can be incredibly daunting. The vision set out in this project to empower people with disabilities to become entrepreneurs is an aspect of work I really welcome and encourage. The work of this project will undoubtedly provide smoother journey for participants towards meeting their full potential. In conclusion, the success of this initiative will be good news for not just disabled people, but for all members of the community, as we look to make our society more equal and inclusive. I would like to thank Towards Work team, particularly Jean McDonough, Claire Hayes and Jessica Reid for undertaking um, this project. Thank you also to the project partners, including TU Dublin, Professor Cooney and Christopher Feeney, who came together to oversee the implementation of this project. I wish you every success with the project and I really look forward to hearing about positive outcomes for participants in the future. Gara
Thank you so much, Minister. It's wonderful to have you here and we appreciate your words very much. Um, we're just going to move on to our discussion panel now. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome our panel of incredible speakers. Each have lived experience of a disability and can speak to the various they have encountered along their journey. They will share their experiences of finding work, assessing, accessing education and starting their own business. I'd like to introduce our panel's moderator, campaigner and local councillor, Carly Bailey. Carly recently graduated from UCD with a Master's in Equality Studies, where she received the Mary, Kettle, Mary Kelly Medal for Egalitarian Activism, which is awarded to a student who has an outstanding record of activism in the field of equality and social justice. We're absolutely delighted to have her here to moderate our panel today. Congratulations, Carly, and thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Claire. It was a lovely welcome. And um, thanks to the Minister also for uh, the remarks there. I think it's great to hear that, that we the recognition that there's further support needed for people in their journey to access education or employment or even to start their own business. Um, we know that there's still too many barriers in the way. So um, I'm delighted to be here and to welcome you all. Um, I am a white disabled woman. I have blondish hair um, I'm wearing a black top um, I have my sea change ribbon on and I've got some really nice uh, yellow earrings and I use the pronouns she and her um, we've got a really great panel I'm going to introduce them all now if they want to turn on their their cameras um, first of all we have Tracy McCann um, if you want to turn on your camera there Tracy um, we also have Stephen Kluski and we also have Blessing Dada for uh, this particular panel. So I welcome you all. Hello, how are you? Hey, great to be here, Carly. Hello, thank you so much. Tracy, are you with us? We'll give Tracy a minute, that's no problem. Um, okay, so um, this is a really great opportunity to be able to kind of talk about um, what it's like to try and kind of go through the journey of education, work, self-employment, um, whether we're through that or we're out the other side, I think it'd be really great to be able to share that experience with those that are watching today. Um, I understand there's a really good mix of people um, listening today uh, from employers, disabled people, um, the, uh, the advocacy groups and that kind of thing. So you're very welcome. Um, so I might just start off, I'm just going to try and keep the time as well here today for 12 o'clock. So um, I might start with yourself, Stephen, if that's OK. Um, in terms of accessing, say, education or in your instance, um, self-employment, you might tell us a little bit about what your business is and then maybe what some of the barriers were, the, maybe the greatest barriers that you had in terms of trying to, to set that up and, and get it going. Sure, um, Carly, and look, great to be here. And I think this initiative is, is so well needed. Um, I'm a white male with brown hair. I've, I'm wearing a gray cardigan and a white vest and I'm in my home office. Um, so my, my background, I'm CEO of a company called Mobility Mojo. We're working with some of the largest hotel groups across the world. Um, in terms of my own physical disabilities, I had an accident about 16, 17 years ago, which left me paralyzed from the neck down. And I suppose my journey to employment and, and how I've gotten here uh, came through education firstly. So I knew that when, when I was first injured, the most important thing for me was keeping my mind active and personally developing as a, as a human and as, as an individual. And online um, access to, to college was a huge part of that. So it's, it's a bit of a norm now with Zooms and with all this sort of interaction. But back at that time, um, it, was, it was more difficult. So I found the Open University, which was an online learning um, college, which led me to, to getting my, my, my business degree and developing my first business back in 2012, which was a total failure. But it, it was more about throwing myself out there and trying to do something. Uh, rather than sitting back and, and waiting for something to happen. Learned so much from it. And thankfully now it's developed into something where our business now, we've, we're have we on the, the verge of Series A. We're working with the likes of um, Marriott, with Virgin Hotels globally, a number of other groups across Europe. Our mission is to, is to 
um, empower people with disabilities to travel. So there's 1.2 billion people globally with accessibility needs, 15% of any population, and more than half that group don't travel because of, of a lack of information on accessibility. And, and we're using technology to fill that gap. But really, the two drivers for me as to how I've gotten here has been education, college, combined with technology to okay. enable me to do what I need to do. That's fantastic, Stephen. Um, Tracy, am I come to you if that's okay? Um, I might ask you the same question, if that's all right. Sorry, Tracy um, seems to have a problem with her microphone. I'm her husband. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, so um, in terms of um, her act, like her the uh, her presentation or whatever, um, I'd be able to play the audio from, from my end because I have it on my device here, but um, there seems to be a problem with her microphone. Uh, so like what the greatest barrier to overcome in terms of education or employment? I'm not, because I'm not with Tracy, I, I, I can, I have her answer to that question. Like yeah, actual you can read it out. Yeah, that'd be great. So that would um, make probably Tracy's more okay sense. Yeah, sorry, it's just uh, we have to improvise because, as you said, technology. <laughs> um, so, like I said, if Tracy wants to turn on her uh, her camera there or whatever. Um, so, in relation to that question, um, Tracy's answer uh, is, last October, my husband and I got married and I subsequently lost my disability allowance. This left me with two options. I could succumb to the negativity of another individual's decision regarding my finances, or I could use that decision as an incentive to attempt something which I was putting off for so long due to the safety net that the, disab that the disability allowance provided me. This decision ultimately has proven to be my greatest obstacle. Trusting oneself and believing in oneself, in oneself's potential is always extremely difficult. Thankfully, my decision has been paying off in lump sums. That's fantastic. And I think that's really interesting. Stephen, you talked about um, how you were able to access education because of an online course um, and how that just made it so much easier for you to be able to do that. And as you say, before the COVID times, that was actually quite unusual um, and something that has acted and may still prevent an awful lot of people from attending um, college and university going forward. But I suppose our hope is that the learnings from the last 18 months will be that actually there can be a balance found whereby we can provide for education in other ways. It can be done. And then with Tracy, I mean, your positivity, I, I everybody should, uh, I hope you're going to advertise your website and all that. Everybody should go and read Tracy's um, uh, website and listen to her videos. Really inspiring, such a positive person. But you mentioned there about the means testing um, implications when it comes to disability um, and that that can all be lost once you become um, you're married or living with somebody else. And it can prove a real um, huge barrier for lots of people. Um, as you say, that safety net is gone. Um, and, I, you know, I think it'd be something that we'd love to see looked at um, as, as, as things progress, you know. OK, move on to um, another question then. So. Um, in terms of sort of being your own boss, again, I might go to you, Stephen, on this one um, first. Um, what does it mean to you to have been able to do that, to go through education, to go through starting a business, failing dr dramatically, as you say, and then being able to come back up and get another one going and it looks to me like you're absolutely flying high? Yeah, look, I, I, it's it's been a journey. And for any entrepreneur, not just someone with a disability, there's lots of ups and downs even throughout a day, you know, your morning could be bad and your afternoon good. Um, I think what's, uh, there's been supports that have really helped with that. So the likes of Enterprise Ireland, we live in an incredible country to be able to support a business. Um, and Enterprise Ireland, we're a high potential startup company. Enterprise Ireland have been instrumental in helping us to get to where we are at the moment. I did notice throughout We've been through different programs. We've been um, in and out of different courses and that of all the, the things we've gone through, I don't think we've come across one other person with a disability. Uh, our co-founder, Noel, 
is a wheelchair user as well. We've a, we've a team now, but the two of us are wheelchair users, so we're we've been driving this. And yeah, with all the Enterprise Ireland programs and that, there was basically no one else with disability. So there is that that sort of isolating piece in in your mind when you're at these things, but there's also the mentality to to push on and to and to to like what's driving us is the passion and the greater good and the impact that we're we're going to potentially have from what we're doing. I, I think as well there's an advantage, Carly, to uh, to having a disability in business. We found, particularly myself, reaching out to people, it's it's opened up the door to a lot of contacts and a lot of networking opportunities that you wouldn't, I, I don't think, would be as easy to get to if it wasn't for the disability. So there's a, there's advantages to this as well. Um, I think accessibility is important. I know it's it's our it's our background and what we do, but in terms of having access to the likes of education and the likes of, of um, employment and entrepreneurship, you know, these things take place in physical spaces. A lot of the time we were talking with um, a venture investment firm recently, and it was a back and forward when we arrived at the place, couldn't get in, there were stairs into the building. So we we to make alternative arrangements and you can see there's a number of those factors that, that create this doubt and this um, this uncomfortableness, both with them and with with ourselves. So, to consider those aspects uh, to programs and to, to to pieces going forward to try to solve this problem. Um, you mentioned as well about barriers for for employment. One thing that that really stuck in my head for the first couple of years, and as Tracy mentioned, was the disability allowance and the fear of losing the disability allowance and the disability benefits if I gained employment and got into work. And so just to, I know some of those fears are unfounded. And I think education and shaping the, uh, the potential for employment for people with disabilities is an important thing to consider there to make sure that people are, are fully informed as to, to what will be affected if they gain employment. Yeah, no, I think that's definitely something that's uh, well worth noting for sure. Um, your disability doesn't go away when you start working and, you know, the additional costs of having a disability don't go away even when you're working or you start your own business. So I think that's, that's a really important point. Um, there's, a, there's also, a, and a, like there's a fear on the employer's side, which, which is a re realistic fear as to, okay, how am I going to cope? How am I going to accommodate this person? And I think for most people with disabilities, they're more than open to to discussing their needs and, and you know, putting people's mind at ease. So I think to to try to alleviate that fear for employers as well, that it isn't it isn't a huge thing to overcome. There's simple things. My background, for example, as a quadriplegic, you know, the the only real extra thing for me if I was seeking employment would be a head mask for the computer and, and a microphone, you know, beyond that everything is doable myself. So, so there's the fear, but there is also a lot of solutions to that fear. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. Okay. That's great. That's great. Um, blessing. I might come to you if that's okay. So what's the best piece of advice you could give to somebody with a disability who's feeling maybe unsure about where to begin, how to begin on their journey? Thank you so much for asking me that question. My heart's like jumped because <laughs> I'm so nervous and I don't know why. Um, I suppose it's some, I, I suppose I'm just nervous because I don't really talk about um, my disabilities um, as often as I want to. Um, but I suppose um, I'll give a little introduction to myself. So my name is Blessing. Um, I'm a 21 year old black woman. Um, I'm wearing a black hat and a dark green jumper and I wear glasses um, and I suppose with my disabilities um, I live with several um, mental illnesses and chronic illnesses um, and I'm also autistic <laughs> so I suppose I was a bit nervous because I was like oh I'm gonna like come out and say like I'm autistic because I've been autistic my whole life and I've only just started to tell people um, this summer um, which is why I might not be making eye contact um, with the screen. Um, and I forgot the question again. Sorry, what was the question? Okay, because the advice would you give somebody maybe starting out on like, you know, if they're thinking about maybe trying to access education or what have you? Um, I suppose when it comes to 
the journey of living life with disabilities, um, the first thing that came into my head, it's a favorite quote of mine, is, um, you know, you can't cross the equator without adjusting to time. Um, and the reason why I like that quote when it comes to this webinar is because, you know, when it comes to disabilities, some people are born with disabilities, some people develop the disabilities over time. Um, and when people think of disabilities, they just think of, you know, a wheelchair and that's really it. And there's just a whole broad of different types of disabilities um, and including with mental illnesses. And I wouldn't have known that myself until um, a few years ago. Um, but I suppose when it comes to those disabilities, um, for me personally, it would be not to assume your disabilities needs to be an obstacle. It's the world that we live in that is the obstacle. And we live in a very, you know, ableist society and the pandemic has just kind of exposed how ableist society is in so many different ways. And um, even myself as a person who is a student and trying to look for work as well. Um, and just seeing the accommodations that have been made just over, you know, a, a, a overnight, basically in, in 2020. Um, it, it's it's the world that um, creates all these obstacles, not necessarily your disabilities, depending on what it is. Um, but with the journey of disabilities, I suppose when, you know, either you're a disability activist or in your personal life, the biggest one, um, I would say is you're not obligated to disclose everything about your disability to people. Um, the bar is so low that my back hurts trying to pick it up because, you know, I have the privilege of being disabled, but being able bodied passing. But at the same time, you know, because they're not as obvious, people would question me or you know wants to find out certain things about me and also just to know that like different types of disabilities look very different um on people um and not everyone is going to understand that and everyone experiences is different um so for example me being autistic um you know every autistic person is different um, and in my case, you know, being a black woman and being autistic, my experiences would be very different. And when I try and speak about these things, intersectionality always just comes into my head just because, you know, we're all made up of, you know, different identities and different experiences. And there's just not one certain thing that, you know, affects the way we go about with life. Um, but yeah, I suppose that answers that question a little bit <laughs> that's really great blessing um I think that really that struck me there as well I mean I've been very similar you know I can absolutely the privilege I hold a of being a white woman and b having a hidden disability for for want of a better way of putting it um certainly means that I can sort of move through life sometimes without having to face the same level of barriers or potentially even prejudice that perhaps Tracy or Stephen or others um would for sure and it is you know, disability has to be seen as a spectrum. And as you say, that intersectionality part of it is so important. You know, like, you know, a man's experience of being a disabled person, you know, if it's a traveler man who's a disabled person, it's going to be very, very different again to somebody like myself or whatever, you know, like, so it's, it's, it's a very important point to make. Um, and I suppose it goes back to, you know, you have to talk to the individual. What are their needs? And as you say, it's the environment around us that disables us. You know, that's that's a really critical point. And, you know, and like as you were saying, Stephen, earlier, like even just trying to access into a building, you know, you got as far as getting into the building, like getting that meeting in the first place was the difficult, you would think was the difficult part, but actually it actually ended up being to actually just trying to get in in the first place. So, you know, it's quite small accommodations at the most of the time is mm. all that is, is needed really and warranted. And it's just a case of asking, what do we need? Um, I think that's a really important point. Okay, um, Tracy, um, I might come to you if that's possible. Um, again, just sort of asking the same thing. What What's the best piece of advice you could give to somebody who's facing this journey right now? Okay, again, I'm going to read the, um, the answer from my end. 
Um, so, um, the best piece of advice I can offer is this. Surround yourself with people who have succeeded at what it is that you are attempting. This is important because you can learn from them, obviously. But not only that, you can also stay focused and motivated when you witness them achieving time and time again what it is that you are aiming to achieve. For me, I am surrounded by development coaches, which assist me with running my one-to-one -one disability development and empowerment courses. Um, I, sorry, I have my one-to-one uh, -one six-week empowerment abilities coaching program, which is about focusing on what you want. I'm also very excited to say that I created a free empowerment abilities reset course, which is a five-day course of live interaction of developing your inner confidence, strength, and power. It's going to be amazing. So I, I think that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the answer to that. Perfect. That's incredible, Tracy. Um, I presume they'll be able to find more information about that on your, on your website, am I right in thinking? Yeah? They will, they will yeah. Can you call out the website? Um, would that be okay? What's the yeah, yeah, sorry, I put it in the chat for that. Um, okay. I'll um, yeah, so it's um, uh, www. Uh, Tracy, that's T or A C E Y McCann M C C A N N dot IE. Perfect, that's lovely. Okay, fantastic. Um and actually, Stephen, I might ask you this one as well, if that's okay. Again, like, you know, what advice would you give to somebody who's starting out on their journey? What's the best piece of what's what, what's the best piece of advice you can think of? Yeah, well, look, I, I agree with Tracy. We've learned so much from from mentors and from throwing ourselves in at the deep end. Really, it it's an enormous amount of work to be an entrepreneur and to to drive what's passionate to you and those around you. I wouldn't be where where mobility mo mojo wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for our co-founder noel and us driving each other so i think find someone who's as passionate about doing what what you are as well and surround yourself with a great team uh, we've been fortunate to have some incredible mentors and still do our investors as well when we opened our, our round for investment we we were oversubscribed and we were able to pick and choose the ones who aligned with our values and with our, our thought process and where we wanted this to go and and that has been one of the best decisions as well where you know people who are like-minded and, and share the same values who um who want to achieve those things just touching back early what you what yourself and blessing were mentioning earlier as well we know from our, our research that it's around 75 percent of, of disabilities are hidden so important to consider that with your employees that they're more than likely you have employees uh, in your business who have a disability and maybe are afraid to speak up. Um, so it's a striking statistic that, you know, while someone like myself is quite physically disabled, you, you, you can see in an instant that there are uh, mobility issues there for someone like Blessing, those with hidden disabilities like yourself, Carly, as well. It often goes unnoticed and un, unspoken about. Uh, so a really important, important thing to, to consider. That's a really good point. I think, and I was talking about it this morning, I was in front of the Disability Matters Committee. Um, stigma is is just, I think, something that really we need to be trying to tackle everybody together. Um, it's a hangover from, from the past and it stays with us still now. Um, it took me, and, and like yourself, Blessing, it took me a long time to be able to say out loud and without any shame that internalised ableism that was there to say I was a disabled person or a disabled woman um, and you know how would that impact me if I'm say running for election or trying to get into the workplace or whatever that might be it is a big part of it and I think from an employer's perspective um, it would be great to see um, employers be more open about that you know like to make it a positive part of who their business and it is I think Stephen you're absolutely right we can actually really contribute to workplaces um, and to our own businesses and, and, and to, into the classrooms or, or lecture halls, um, whatever you know part we're playing. I think 
is 13 and a half percent of the entire population at the moment is 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 considered disabled mm -hmm. and that's going to rise to about 20 percent over the next decade or so so you know a fifth of the population so you know like within my own family you know my son um, is autistic my dad is a wheelchair user like that's replicated across families across ireland you know disability is very normal it's just it's just a part and piece of who we are. It's not everything about who we are, but it's just a part and piece. And those accommodations and supports and the idea of the mentorship, she talked about that, yeah. Steve, that's part of hopefully some of the work that's going to be going on here with Open Doors yeah. that will be made available to people. And I think that's a really fantastic um, positive measure. Because um, as you say, Tracy, surrounding yourself with people that you know you want to aspire to do what they're doing you can do that with mentors and, and, and what have you. Um, yeah, it's a really good one. So greatest teaching moment. I'm going to ask all of you this one. Like, what would you call your greatest teaching moment? And maybe I'll go to Tracy first, if that's OK. OK, so um, just going back to um, to what she had said there in relation to um, her previous answer in relation to surrounding yourself with uh, or, uh, yeah surrounding yourself with uh, with I suppose like-minded and like-minded people but also people who have achieved what it is that you're aiming to achieve and um, that is that has helped Tracy because um, Tracy uh, I'm just going to so again like I said um, I'm just going to read what she wrote um, I have my one-to-one -one six week empowering abilities coaching program, which is about focusing on what you want. I am also very excited to say that I created a free empowering abilities reset course, which is a five day course of live interaction, developing your inner confidence, strength and power. It's going to be amazing. If anyone would like to be gifted a free space starting on October the 18th, just reach, reach out and let me know. It will be absolute, an absolute my absolute pleasure to have you part. Um, the reason I'm the reason she mentioned that is because of the it was uh, it was due to her surrounding herself uh, with men, uh, with uh, like-minded people, and one of them is now her mentor. That that mentor in a kind of uh, talked talked her through and gave her instructions on how to set up. A course, and now Tracy has has a course, and um, and uh, she she's been doing it uh, with loads of people uh, around the world, actually, to be honest. Um, and it's um, so that was her her greatest, like, not really aha moment, but her greatest learning is you know learning off others. Okay, fantastic. Um, blessing. I might ask you the same. Um, I suppose my greatest teaching moment would be to to go where you're celebrated and not where you're tolerated. Um, and that, you know, if you can't find a seat at a table to just kind of create your own and invite people to that table. Because in my experiences of living with disabilities, I also forgot to <laughs> mention that I live with fibromyalgia um, as one of my many, many chronic illnesses. Um, I always find myself, as you mentioned with um, internalized ableism that I would not use my walking cane in public and I would only use it in, you know, very extreme circumstances. And to myself, I was kind of like, why should I wait until I'm about to like pass out in order to like use my walking cane? It's like the bare minimum to look after myself. Um, so, you know, I went to places where I was celebrated um, for just being myself. Um, and now, um, you know, just finding support groups, um, you know, finding a support group for fibromyalgia, finding a support group um, in the autistic community. Um, it's really just refreshing that, you know, you don't have to mask or you don't have to, you know, hide anything and just show up as your authentic self. Um, and just living life for so long um, just trying to fit in in places where there is just ableism everywhere and um, there's so much work that needs to be done to 
dismantle ableism. Um, but at the same time, it, it comes with collective change and, you know, it, you can't do it alone and you have to like look after yourself in that process. Um, so that's what I'm learning to do at the moment. Um, and yeah, like for me personally, um, depending on the disability for me, um, you know, fibromyalgia um, does, does define me. Um, and I know people might say like, you know, disability shouldn't define you, but it does impact the way I live my life in so many different ways. And the same with being autistic, you know, um, and then also with mental illnesses, I wouldn't say it, you know, it defines me because, you know, just a lot of the trauma that comes with living um, with disabilities have impacted the way, um, you know, I, I process things in the world. But overall, I know that there is people fighting for a change and there is people that are willing to listen to your story and, you know, wanting to be the change that they want to see in society. Um, so that was the greatest teaching moment for me. It was an amazing blessing. Thanks very much. There's lots of lessons within that. Um, Stephen, I'll come to you and we'll wrap up then. Yeah, look, I, I think with, I, I, for me, anything is possible, you know, or most things are still possible with the right support and, and guidance and personal drive. I think everything is still on the table. I've met other entrepreneurs with disabilities globally um, who similar wheelchair users who have, have started and sold companies for hundreds of millions of euro. Um, I think passion is so important though, to find what you're, you're passionate about. I don't feel like I've, I've worked a day in the last 10 years because what we go to do every day in work has the potential to, to impact more than half a billion people. You know, that's the drive. Imagine getting out of bed every morning and being able to think the work that we're doing today potentially will impact more than 500 million people globally. And I think that passion and that, um, that purpose is something that, that gives you the drive through the days that maybe aren't so good and the, the, the stuff that affects you badly with the disability. But it, it, it's the stuff that gets you through those. Um, so yeah, and anything is possible, even with a disability. Amazing. Okay. Um, well, I hope everybody listening today has learned so much from everybody here. Um, that was a fantastic chat. I really enjoyed that. I hope you all did too. So I'll hand back to Claire now um, so she can wrap up for today. But thanks very much for having us and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone who's attended um, and to our four incredible panellists, to Carly for moderating just the insights and the stories that have been shared have been so inspiring. And I just I appreciate so much to have you here to celebrate the start of Towards Work. And just to touch on what Tracy said, surround yourself with people who have succeeded and who can lift you up, the same as what Blessing has said. So that's what Towards Work are here to do, to support and empower anybody who wants to start their journey at whatever point they're at and wherever that is too. Um, just to wrap up, I'd just like to say a few thank yous. So thank you to our panelists. I'd also like to really acknowledge and thank the team who helped and supported me in putting this event together. Open Doors Initiative CEO, John McDonough, Directors of Employer for Change, Christabel Feeney, and Jessica Reeds, Towards Works Designer. Um, I couldn't ask for a better team to have behind me. Um, I'd also like to thank Minister Abbott for her support, and we look forward to future engagements as well. Um, and just to finish off with our first training session of the season is starting next Tuesday and it's about building confidence. Um, so we're starting at 11 a.m. Please do check it out. It's on our website at towardswork.ie and you can register there. Um, we've got a couple of other sessions up at the moment that the event rights are opened as well. So please do join us. And if you'd like to stay up with any up to date with any of our upcoming events, follow us on Twitter. Instagram at towards underscore work or on LinkedIn and you can sign up for our newsletter there as well. So once again, I say a huge thank you for joining us this morning to celebrate the start of Towards Work and looking forward to working with you all again in the future. Thanks so much. <laughs>